Good afternoon. My name is Jamie Quinzer, and I'm so excited to have each of you joining us this afternoon for Real Sync by Sync. This afternoon, uh, our CEO, Alvaro Rizzi, is uh, joined by Cody Gibson, who is across the country in over 100 markets. They'll be diving into uh, tons of questions and content, but before we get going, I have a couple housekeeping items. The first of all, if you have any questions throughout, please feel free to send them. Uh, and we'll be answering them. And then at the very end, we'll keep it open for a few more questions. If you like this type of content, along with uh, Sync Rev, which we hosted last Thursday, uh, check out our YouTube channel uh, just by searching Sync. You can view uh, these videos, Cody's video from last week, and much more. Yes. Um, but I think without further ado, we're going to keep it um, about 30 minutes. So then that way, there's tons of tactical tips you can implement in your business, along with learning from one of the best, and that's Cody Gibson. So, Alvaro and Cody, do you want to kick it off? Thank you. Awesome. awesome, Jamie. Thank you so much. And, Cody, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for spending the time. It's, uh, it's really great to, to have to get someone like you that has a view over a lot of the country um, because we, every one of us is seeing little pieces and bits um, across different states and and. The reason that, uh, that I was so excited with the idea of having you here today is that as part of your great and growing business, the, one of the unique things of your business is, is that fact that you have offices. How many, how many different offices do you have <laughs> today? We uh, were in 103 cities, uh, 22, 22 or 23 different states, uh, which is interesting, right? Because especially, I mean, usually, we have to deal with, you know, one state does real estate kind of the same as this one. It's all kind of the same and it's all kind of different. But right now, like during the COVID issue, we've seen dramatic differences. Like one state is okay here. One state, you know, we're essential. One state, we can do open houses virtually. One state, you can't do anything. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of all over the place right now. And that's, and that's so, so as we think of, of our people today and everyone that's joining, um, we're all trying to find our way. Yeah, we're all trying to find, um, I think we all recognize that there's a big opportunity in this challenge, but that doesn't mean that the challenge is not there. And it does mean that people are having to find different ways of doing what they've been doing in a certain way for a very long time. And adapting is <clears throat> not easy. So what have you, some of those, of, of those experiences that you or your teams may have found of how best to adapt to this situation and how's that different in California versus Dallas versus Georgia? <clears throat> yeah, that's a really good question. So a couple of things come to mind. The first is um, like people are the same everywhere. Like it's just people. And what's interesting about this challenge is that there's nobody to blame. Like there's no, like we can't just say this person did ABC and now we're all in this fix. Like that's, it's kind of like where this whole challenge is for our real estate business right now. We know there's opportunity in it. We also know, like, I believe that, and this, this pains me, like this pains me to say it, hmm. but I believe that right now it's about survival. Like right now it's about getting through. I think if you're a business right now, you don't pump yourself up with fake sunshine and go, we're going to thrive. Hmm. Thriving today might be being in business in three months. Thriving today might be still being open in three months. That's, that's just the reality. Um, at the same time, this is a short period of time. This is a small, this is a small window. Um, one of the things that we're finding is um, scripts that work right now. I mean, it's two things. How are you and what do you need? And we also find that right now we can be a little bit this, we can be a little bit more, um, I don't know how to say it, but salesy, like more direct. We can be a little bit more direct right now and actually ask questions like, do you need any help with real estate? Do you have a real estate you know, need coming up or a challenge that we could help with or be in front of on? Um, that was really tough three weeks ago, though today it's being well received again. Like we can actually push a little bit. Um, I think it has to be done the right way, but we can actually push and ask directly. Um, states like California, you know, we have like California is essential. And so we can go, we can, we can do virtual open houses. We can show homes as long as we're following social distancing. Like we're okay there. Um, there's you can other show state. homes in, in, in person, but Correct. the owners need to be outside of the house, right? Yep. And, and you need to take some precautions. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's a challenge too for the realtor, right? Because some of the states, like I saw one and I forget what state this was in, but it said, um, basically the verbiage wasn't this, but it said that the realtor was 
uh, responsible for, you know how like a business might be responsible for having to have like, um, you know, hand sanitizer and a mask and all that kind of stuff, but was basically putting the onerous on the realtor. On the realtor. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you can go and buy hand sanitizer somewhere. So like the realtor goes, well, shoot, now I'm kind of stuck providing this. I don't even know if I have it. Um, but like these these are, these they don't need to times. restock the house with toilet paper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone's getting very creative there, right? Um, all, of a, all of a sudden, the, the Europeans with the bidet seem to make yeah. a lot of sense. It's, it's, like, ah, it's an asshole. It. Yeah. Now the house yeah. is an asset. You're putting on the MLS. It has a bidet. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, it makes perfect sense. And of course, uh, yeah, I mean, but, I grew up in a trailer you... park. And so for me, a bidet was a garden hose, but you get it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you recommending to your, to your agent uh, to deal with that? Yeah. So, so how are you running your business different in that office from where you were doing it a month ago? Some of them. So like, so like my partners and the people that I spend time talking to, like, I don't necessarily believe there's a right or wrong here. I don't think, I mean, one person goes, um, you know, we got to motivate our people to get back out there and sell. You listen, Alro, you and I have talked about this. There's some people that just say, listen, I don't want to sell right now. Mm -hmm. I've got money in the bank. I'm okay. I'm just, I am just solely focused on this. And I think it's inappropriate to be selling. I won't argue with that person. That's completely, that's legitimate. That's fair. That's fine. Then there's a group of people that go, regardless of, you know, they, they go, well, I think I should sell right now. There's opportunity. Uh, we've got, I mean, we had um, 10 to 15% of all of our transactions died overnight when we went from a credit score of 580 to 620, like overnight died. And we have deals right now. I mean, like the VOEs, the verification of employment, you know, that they would do like the day before closing or usually a few days before closing. They're doing them today at the title company. They're doing them today at closing saying let's verify the job right now and then um, the, we had one um, last week I forget what city it was in the morning of funding like the very next morning they called and verified the job again mm -hmm. like and this is I mean this is this is killing transactions so we've got some groups that go I'm gonna go out and sell then you have somebody who says regardless of whether I think I should sell or not sell I have a money problem yeah and if you've got a money problem, like if you're broke, you don't have a choice. You don't get to choose how you feel about it. You know, we chose a business that if you don't sell homes, you don't make money. Absolutely. And so like you have to make something happen. The good news is there's opportunity. So it's almost like I keep thinking of this being like December 18th over and over and over again. On December the 18th every year, a week from Christmas, there's not a whole lot of buyers and sellers. There's just not. But the ones that are out there, they're both motivated. The buyers there, albeit there's less of them, are high motivation. The sellers, albeit less of them, high motivation. And so that's the only time of the year that I find that they just meet each other. Well, this whole issue with COVID, this feels like December 18th over and over and over. It's kind of like that Groundhog's Day movie, right? It's the same thing every day. It's just another one of them. And I'd say you're, you're looking at it from the side of the agent, which I get. Yes. And that the fact that some agents need to work and, and cannot afford not to work. Uh, I also see it, there's a true need. Uh, if, you, if you think about it, uh, again, you mentioned the money issue, but it's not just money issue. Like, again, I've said it the other day, you're getting divorced, you're getting divorced anyway. Your every day counts. And you know that even if you're locked in together now, it's when are we being able to move uh, apart? Or if you got married and you need to move into a bigger place and you just had kids or you're having kids That's now, nice. those yep. don't change uh, yep. because of COVID. And, and so for me, I, I can absolutely understand an agent that is saying, I don't want to do anything. And if they have their life in a way, that's great. Perfect. But for every agent that, that wants to fight, I don't think that uh, they need to feel that they're doing anything wrong. There's, there's a need. And as long as you're taking, you're following the guidelines and you're taking the, um, uh, the recommendations that are given and you're doing things carefully, you are there to, to fulfill the need. And even in places where um, it's completely shut down, you can't show houses and you need to do everything virtually, there's still a human need uh, to be able, people are scared. They know that they need to do this, but everything is stopped. Being able to talk to someone that could guide them through the initial steps of this process is super valuable. What we're finding, you're hundred percent on. I mean, and what we're finding is, I mean, as long as the energy and the frequency is, I want to bring value and I want to help you. It's almost like one person could use two dialogues. And excuse me, one person had the same dialogue, but it's two different people. Let me say it the right way. Two different people use the same dialogue. 
One person is all about, I just want to help human beings. I, I know that you need help. I know that I can help you. And how do I get there? The other goes, I got to make a sale and I need you to be it. Well, the exact same dialogue falls with this one, right? Because the frequency is very salesy. The frequency is I need, I need, I need. Whereas this person could say anything, but they actually want to help. And that's the thing where like this whole thing, um, when this whole thing started to truly crater, um, two weeks before, um, I went to a city, great big group, and I said, what do you guys want me to talk about? And they said, listen, you've got to come out here and talk about iBuyers and how to deal with iBuyers and how to protect our business and how to sell homes. And like that city had like 25% of their sales the, the, the month previous, iBuyers. It's a big deal. Well, guess what no one's doing today? Okay. Like no one's talking about iBuyers. No one's talking. I mean, you just see how fast things shift, how fast things change. And the, the realtor who wants to get face to face and help buyers and help sellers, that's as, that's as unique today as it's ever been. That's as good of a play today as it's ever been. Like if you're a realtor who wants to help people, like this is your play. This is the simplest time to do it. People aren't reaching out for just technology to solve that problem. They want a human being and that human being experience, um, which is why like for us, it's so important to couple it with sync the human being and sync that's constantly running to help the human being, all of a sudden you can help more people. And, and how are you doing, like in the states where you cannot show houses, are you doing like virtual ones where the owner allows you to go in and do a virtual tour or do you ask the owner to do it? Uh, we've had, we've had, yeah, we've had to do both. Like in some states, we can't go do it. We have to, we have to like walk the seller through it and say, listen, Grab your phone. I mean, the good news is most people can grab their phone and just do it, right? Like 99% can do it. So the realtors all of a sudden becoming a technologist, like a help desk saying, okay, get on your phone, go to Zoom. I'll go there too. You walk me through the house, you know, or you just hold the camera and I'll do the talking. You hold the phone, I'll do the talking or whatever. Like, I mean, the realtors having to be incredibly um, creative right now. One of the important things that I would say though, is you don't need, you don't need a great big system for right now, because right now won't be here in two months or four months or six months. Someone has a crystal ball, but it's not going to be forever. And I don't think you need long-term solutions for short-term problems. And so I was talking with someone the other day and they were going to create this great big system and operating procedures. And I just said, time out. You don't need to do that. Just muddle your way through it. Do the best you can. Throw it against the wall. You're not going to be doing this in whatever the near future looks like, whether it's three weeks or three months. I mean, some states are already starting to relax some of this. And there's lots of, there's lots of theory around that. Is it good? Is it bad? I'm not here to talk about that. Like, I don't know any of that. I just know that this won't be the same forever. And so you don't need a big, you don't need a great big system for that. You just need to do something. And right now having something done is having something more, it's more important than right. Yes. And, and I, I think, as you say, the important thing is just establishing the connection and so I think like we try to give more tools for you to be more human. We've pushed video texting. We're pushing for the open virtual house and different things. Uh, but whether you're using, as you're saying, the latest technology and the latest feature that Sync just did or not, if you're there for them, uh, they're going to appreciate that. They're going to uh, remember that, and you are going to be their advisor because, again, they have to transact. That is not optional. They're going to transact. In the, in the next three months if they were going to transact on that before. Our searches are through, like our searches right now, I don't know what you're saying, Alvaro, like across the board, but we've got sync in all 100 plus cities. We're finding that our searches are through the roof. Like we've got more searches right now, like per, like you take the entire data bank of all the people that are in our sync buckets. Um, if there's X searches normally, right now it's X plus, like it's X plus 20 or 30%, like the searches on there are through the roof. Um, so I don't know if it's people are at home more. Like, I mean, I, I can take lots of guesses, uh, <laughs> but people that weren't on the site for the last two or three months are all of a sudden back on. Maybe they're just curious about, hey, what's happening with, you know, I don't know. But, but all that does is create um, up for us or opportunity for us just checking in. Do you need something? You know, hey, I'm a real live person. If you need something, let me know. You know, if you're just browsing, totally cool. Uh, but one of the scripts that we use over and over and over is we're ready when you are. Like we're ready when you are. We want to match our behavior to your motivation. You can search forever and we'll never, we'll never bother you if that's what you want. But if you need help, we're right here. We're just a click away. Like we say that over and over and over. And I mean, it was just, um, 
it was the end of March that we put together a deal. So it was well after COVID like really hit Portland and already shut down. This is a, a Portland story. Uh, we sold something out of our sync database that had been floating around in there for like 40 or 41 months. Nice. And so that's 40 or 41 months of somebody basically saying, don't contact me. I'm good. Like we went back and looked at the notes and we saw things like take me off the list, like all those things that everybody understands about internet lead gen. And that person that's no, 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 leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone is now like, I want to buy right now. And that was a six or 700 K deal for us. And at the end of March, I mean, we always need it. Yeah, no. Really needed that one. And all of a sudden, <laughs> that's great. Right. You're just like, you're like, yes. And that's where, that's where those old ones, I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of like that old idea of like they go into the trash or they go into whatever and, you know, then you pull them back out and all of a sudden, okay. yes, like what was dead is now alive and well. I, I, I sometimes, uh, and I want to go back to something you said, but you reminded me every now and again, I get a client that asks me how I have this person that refuses to give me real information, but they keep using my site. It really pisses me off. How do I forbid them from using my site? And I'm like, no. don't, don't. That's don't ridiculous. Them. Keep trying. And yeah. a year from now, when they're ready, they're going to give you their information and you're going to yeah. have a great sell. Like that would be a mistake. I mean, we just have to, I mean, what hasn't changed is how early people start the search process. Like that's always been, I mean, that, I mean, imagine going to a car dealership and someone telling you, listen, if you're not buying right now, you got to get the hell out. You'd be like, what? And what? when you did want a car, you'd go somewhere else. But that's and, and that's the way of showing the, the in car dealership business, the worst sales guys are the ones that pre-qualify. That when someone comes into the dealership, if they think that they don't look like it, they just they want to run them out the door. And and that's a huge mistake. But I love what you said about your uh, your behavior matching their uh, motivation. That uh, I hadn't heard it before, and it makes perfect sense. And we just um, tell them that over and over. And so, I mean, and you know, when, when we get on the phone with them, we tell them what that means. We go, what that means to us is, you know, we don't know if you need a home in the next two or three weeks because you just moved here, I'm going to be blowing you up. <laughs> if you're looking two or three years out, I'm just kind of ready when you are. Drop me a note when you need a question answered. And just as long as we know, we can, like, we can act accordingly. And we just keep telling people we're ready when you are, yeah. you know, whether that's today or in four years. I mean, the thing is, I'm not getting out of this business in four years. I'm not getting out of sync in four years. I'm going to need that person. So whether it's now or later, yeah. I mean, I think about how much business we have that's right now business that was from three and four and five years ago. And it's just been sitting there and it just kind of heats and heats and heats. And then it pops one day. Yeah. And the more you have in, we all know that fortunes in the follow-up. I just think it's easy to forget sometimes. And you asked me a good question on, on search and, and, for anyone that's watching, if you go back to, to our Sync uh, YouTube channel, you'll see the last episode, um, Real Sync 3, and where Dan and Harry talked specifically about volume of, uh, of search. The truth is, it has been through the roof, as you're saying. Uh, traffic is up, and we were meetings with Google and Facebook this week where both confirmed our suspicions. Yeah, traffic is up because more people are online. And it is true that a good bunch of advertisers went out of it, which is true for advertising, it's true for real estate in general. There's gonna be a 30% of real estate agents that are getting out of the business and that leaves those transactions to be gathered. And what that is, um, the impact that that is having is in Facebook, for example, the cost per lead from before the crisis to now, the average for all of the country went from 365 to 277. So a lead is $2.77 right now. That's so the, CPL, the CPL went down by 12 or 14%. 25%. 25%, okay. Yeah, huge. So, and, and, and it depends, you could say, well, okay, so the cost per lead went down, did quality go down, which means because there's more people browsing, depends on how you measure it. If you measure it by, the chance of you getting a quality conversation that has gone up. I don't know your numbers. Most of our clients, their hit ratio of quality conversations has gone up. People want to talk. <laughs> They're not hearing me. Yes. F yeah. off. Don't call me. That's not happening. No, nope. they got time. All of a sudden they're like, Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Yeah, they've, got, <laughs> they've got more time than ever. I mean, I don't like some of, some of my best friends play this game and I don't think they're wrong. I just don't personally play the game on internet lead gen of being, you know, I don't worry about the quality of it. Like at the end of the day, a certain number are going to buy or sell from me right away. 
and a certain number are going to buy or sell from me in the future, and a certain number are never going to buy and sell with me. And I'm okay with all three buckets. The more I shove into the top of the funnel, the better I'm going to do in all three of those arenas. And so what most people do, in my opinion, when they talk about the quality, what they're usually talking about is right now business. Like how many people right now want to go meet and buy or sell a home with you? And I just, I, I really, Alvaro, I just really think it's short-sighted. I think that's a short play. I think the long play is how many can I communicate with regularly? And then a certain percentage are always going to be doing this. And so we're constantly just shoving that in the top of the bucket. And the bigger and more robust it is, the better we're going to do long-term. Um, so usually it's someone who's just short on money right now and they want to hang it on quality of leads. Leads are leads. I don't think that there's, I don't know that I believe in good or bad. I just believe in motivated or not motivated. But sooner or later, they're all motivated. Like everyone's <laughs> yes. buying. So everyone buys or sells sooner or later. Yep. Even and, the guy who just bought from us the other day, that was four years, I mean, 40 or 41 months deep. Somebody would have said, that's a bad lead, 40 months right. for this. And he doesn't, he's not ready. Well, you know what? He's ready then. And we damn sure needed that sale on the end of March. So yeah. we sure the, were glad to have it then. So, so one, one interesting point is we have almost 50% of our leads. Hey, say hi. Hi, how are you? <laughs> so let's grab her. So, so kids all our leads, if you get 100 leads from us on a given month, um, only let's say that you're good at what you do, you're going to convert 3 or 4% of those leads. Only half of those will happen in the first year. So 50% mm -hmm. of those conversions are going to happen in the second 12 months since you got that lead. And so, as you say, quality depends on how long you're willing to invest. Hey, hey. Now, how long you want to measure it for? Like if you'll go four years or five years or eight years, like how far out are you going to go? Like I'm convinced we're going to sell somebody a house this year that's been bouncing around in sync for six years. So, so Cody, this leads me to a question. You've done awesome to include your family in your, in your videos and yeah. in what you're doing now. Talk to me a little bit about that because this you know, is about doing things different, yeah? What's been fun for us, like we all became homeschool teachers overnight like this. We're like, well, now we homeschool. And, all, <laughs> you know, and in certain states, like school's out for the rest of the year. In Oregon, where I live, School's not coming back till fall. And one of the things that we did was we wanted to take advantage of the opportunity that we had. And so we started doing like my kids did a, uh, a hip hop dance webinar. And that was super fun. Uh, my little girl Maris, who's 10, has really wanted to do like a YouTube channel that has to do with cooking. And so we grabbed the camera and we threw it on YouTube. We did a live webinar. I mean, the thing is this, like I really believe that the play right now is to help somebody near you. And it's a very humanistic time. Like you just grab somebody and help them. And I don't know, like I don't know the right step 40 steps from today, but I know the very next right step right now. And I'm looking at life that way. Like I get up in the morning and I think, you know, who can we help and what can we do by mid morning? And then who can we help and what can we do by lunchtime? And I, I really believe that if we just keep doing that, we're all going to get through it. But I also think that you got to choose something like the hip hop webinar. My son has been a competitive hip hop you know, kid for 10 years, so he's passionate about it. I think if we all chose something that we're passionate about, somebody listening right now, you're amazing at quilting. Get on there and do something about quilting. Like that's not my jam, but it's yours. Somebody else is really amazing at doing this or this or cake decorating. You choose something. There's a, there's a place for everybody to help someone. And if we all do something, we all move forward with this. So just choose something you like and help somebody with. Like we've had a blast with it. It's been great for us. It's well, been great. We, don't, we don't know how the world is going to be after all of this. As you're saying. We have, we have no idea. Like, I mean, someone made the comment to me the other day. They said, Cody, our kids and their kids might not even know what a handshake is. <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, and there's lots of cultures who don't shake hands already. Like, like it's just the Western culture really that shakes hands. Like if I meet someone who's Mandarin, they're not going to shake my hand typically. Like it would be obtrusive almost. So it's just interesting. And then you realize, you go, oh, yeah, not everybody lives the same way. <laughs> I agree. I, I used one of my first jobs uh, was installing a factory for, for Toyota, actually, for a Toyota supplier called Butech. And I got a big immersion into what it meant doing business with Japanese and how different that is. I remember right. one of the biggest, I was mediating between 
um, the union of Argentinian automobile workers, pretty tough people, <laughs> and, tough and these big shots from Hack Japan that had come and we're waiting at, uh, at lunch and the union is 20 minutes late, yeah? And, and these Japanese executives are getting all excited. And I'm like, why are you so excited? And they explained to me that because the union is late, they've lost strength in the negotiation because they're already late and at fault. Yep. I'm like, no, they're showing you that they can be 20 minutes late and you're here. So in their and mind, you're not leaving. Yeah, you're <laughs> late for them. Yep. Both sides thought, both sides thought that they were having the upper hand. Yeah. And that's when, when different cultures clash. And that's, that's why what I'm saying is the fact that we are changing a paradigm right now where uh, th what's right and what's wrong is getting reassessed. That's why I, I, I admire what you're doing of adapting to it, getting your family on it. Like, again, what's right and wrong is different. And, and it's also fun. And it's being able to, to roll with that. Yeah. Uh, it makes perfect sense. You had asked, uh, not to switch, but you had asked something about how we were communicating. And I, I, I omitted saying it and I should have. We're probably, I'm a little bit embarrassed by it, but we're probably spending more time like in the dashboards of sync than we used to be. And we're <laughs> spending more time trying to figure out like what people are doing and are they staying engaged? But it's come, it's almost come from, like I'll just be really transparent. It's come from a different heart. Before COVID, like if we would have looked, it would have been like, all right, who's doing their job and who's not, which I don't think is wrong. Like that's fine too. Everyone needs accountability. Though right now we're finding people that are hurting that haven't said something like our own partners, our own agents. And it's like, ah, you know, I know they're struggling with money. I know that something's wrong right now, yet they haven't been in here. They haven't been doing it. And so it's really allowed us to make some care calls to our people because we're not seeing them every day, um, obviously. And so that's been like, for us, that's been, a, that's been a savior for us just to have some, some eyeballs on what's happening, though not to protect ourselves, more just to know like who's struggling, who hasn't raised their hand and said, hey, I'm, I'm really struggling with this. Like I'm, I'm having a hard time. We, we've, seen, we've seen quite a bit of it. Uh, we've seen bigger usage of things like the activity tracker and the broker dashboard uh, or like, use of things like Switchboard Sara that is calling everyone to see who picks up. There is, as, as you say, uh, team leaders are being very, different agents have different needs right now and they have different availability. And what they want is to place the business on the people that can take care of it. And, yes. and so it, it's about finding, finding that link. And, and for that, the different tools that we have, re lead reassign, the people that are using the pond, for example, and only let you have 30 leads so that they can know that you're working them well. All of those things, actually, it could be a good, a good separate real thing that we could do specifically on different things you can do to maximize accountability. When we all, I mean, we're guilty of it too, right? As much as we use sync, we're guilty of not knowing all the bells and whistles. We're guilty of not using them to their full. I mean, like, I'll raise my hand first. Like, you know, <laughs> we use this at a level two instead of a level 10, right? But this is, like, the reality is, it's kind of like having a database. If you're unwilling to take this time to do those things, like you're never going to do it. Like if you don't come out of this with a better system or even, even like the states and cities that were really, really very locked down right now, like we have people that are in and around New York. You could imagine what real estate sales looks like in and around New York today. I mean, it's, it ain't happening. You're like, listen, it ain't happening, which means you do what you can do. And I think that the only mistake right now, the only bad choice today is to do nothing. Do not That's the only it. bad play. Whatever play it's going to be, even if it's re reformatting the data bank, even if it's going through and updating all of your information, all those things, it's, I look at those things like cleaning the garage. It's never fun. You're never excited about it, but you know how damn good it feels when you have it done. <laughs> and like, this is the time to clean the garage. Like you've got the time. So clean the garage. We do live training every day now. So yeah, get on well, the site and, and it's available. Hop in there and do it. Like, I mean, like, I don't know, like if, if you're unwilling to do those things today, I think you have to quit blaming it on not having the time. Quick question that we have from, from one of the viewers from Henry. So commenting on video usage, what do you think are best practices, do's and don'ts of, of using video today? I think, I think a few things on video. Number one, video has been king for a while. It's absolutely in real estate. Here's my advice for you. Number one, um, shoot it one time, 
don't even look at it. And I know that's gonna, <laughs> I know, I know that's hard for my friends, like for my friends that listen that are perfectionists. The problem is you don't have the time to be a perfectionist. I'd rather take eight videos that are okay and get them out than spend the time to get one video just right. Like I've learned that if I shoot something, if I watch it, I almost always reshoot it. Mm -hmm. Almost always. Cause I'm like, no, no, I can do that. I mean, and then all of a sudden I'm 40 minutes deep to make a 60 second video. Agreed. And I try to look at the world with that as if I was live. If I'm live, I can't reshoot. I can't step out of a seller's home and go, hang on, hang on. I totally botched that. Let me go out and come. I can't do that. And so I look at video the same way. Just shoot it, send it. Um, I think right now you could do a ton of um, text video. I mean, you could do a ton of FaceTime. You could do, uh, you could drop video into databases or campaigns or email campaigns. You can drop them into sync. People want to see a real life human being. And I think it matters. Um, and I don't think it needs to be expensive. If you want to spend a hundred bucks or 200 bucks, if you're going to spend any money on anything, as it comes to video, my advice today is lighting, like lighting. And then, uh, and then audio, if you're going to do that, because you can have great audio, but if you're super dark and you can't, you look like you're on like the FBI most wanted. And it's your, <laughs> this like, is you a perfect know, example. Faces. Yeah, this exactly. Perfect like, example. You can see Cody <laughs> over there and, and me uh, and the different lighting looks fine. I was on the it phone. It almost with looks like Cody takes better care of his hair, but it's just the lighting. It has it's nothing. just the lighting, yeah. It's not actual truth. It's just. It's <laughs> are you respecting social distancing, or are yeah. you having your hair done? <laughs> yeah, I, I I can't answer that question. <laughs> I I will say from from the same yeah, side. Um, I I do recommend, guys. Uh, yes, we have uh, new video features available. We have video texting. We have video email. Um, we're still doing it for free and, and it's always, there's a limit where it's always free. And if you go over, there's some cost, but it's, it's not big. Even um, that's minimal though. Like the cost is like, it's, it's not, I mean, yeah. you couldn't do it on your own for that cost. And so the important thing is you have the tools. If it's through text, you have a 20 second limit. Uh, but when it's an email, you don't, I still recommend keeping it short. Attention spans are, are very uh, are easy to stray. So so that we have some um, takeaways. We'll also put a link on again on the comments of this video. If you go to our YouTube channel, and we have Eddie, our head of product, for all of this that will guide you through anything you need. So we encourage you to use more of what we have. It's all being rolled out, and you can put the the videos on emails, on campaigns. So so please go explore and use it. Good. You know, one of the things that we keep looking at is what are the plays we can do right now that wouldn't have worked two months or three months ago and might not work two or three months from today. And one of them, speaking of video, everybody listening to this could pull this off. Get um, six or eight or five or 10 business people in your city. Get them together on a Zoom and say, listen, I'm going to host a mastermind on how businesses pivot right now to virtual work. If you're in a major metro, uh, we're finding what works the best is lumping them in classes. Like this one is restaurants, this one is coffee shops, this one is chiropractors or doctors or attorneys or whatever. Like everyone's hurting right now. Uh, this one's retail or small retail, automotive. But if you're in a more rural area, you might just put them all in one. But what you do is you invite them and you don't have to have the answers. All you're doing is facilitating the mastermind. You don't need the answer. So take that off your shoulders. You're just saying, hey, I've got eight of my friends on here that are business owners in XYZ City. What are you guys doing? Like, what's your idea to go, to go virtual? Do you have a play that could keep some money running or some service going that becomes virtual? There's some incredibly creative people. And for as much as it's hard for the world right now and hard for the economy, there's also both sides. There's a restaurant out there who won't make it through this. There's a restaurant that won't reopen its doors. But you know what? There's also somebody who has a hope and a dream that's going to open something there a month later that never would have had the opportunity. So the old adage of a door closing and a door opening, I don't know what's more true than that right now. So as tough as that is, that spells opportunity. Like it's just there. And so I think, I mean, I keep asking, where is the opportunity? Uh, but what you do is you get them on this Zoom call and you ask them, you say, listen, who do you know that should be on here with us? Who's a smart business person? I don't think they would have joined this call with you two months ago, but they will right now. And they might not two months from now, but they will right now. Like this is a right now play, not a long-term play. It's right now. And you say, who do you want on here? I'll invite them. And all of a sudden you get to add those to your database. 
whoever, whoever is hearing you today is going to dictate who's listening to you about real estate in a hundred days. You got to remember that some of them are going to be right now. And many of them are going to be 60, 80, hundred. The other piece is like, we started looking, um, like I found myself with this same problem. I was, I was creating a story in my mind until I looked at the numbers and the numbers said in some cities that pendings week over week and week from the same month before, before COVID really hit, were only down five and 10 and 12%. Other areas were down 30 and 40 and 50%. So both can be true, but some of you are in areas that your pendings are almost the same. Showings are way down, but pendings are almost the same. So just look at the numbers. Like don't don't assume. I was assuming, and I was wrong in some some cities for sure. Did I lose you on my side? Yeah, I'm here now. Somehow, if I mute myself, I cannot unmute me. Oh, perfect. Thank you, no Jamie, problem. for unmuting me. <laughs> so I know you, so I know about thirty six. Did you have any more questions from the group you wanted to give time to? Yeah, I have one last one and I think we can open it up to, to questions in general. I think um, because following on what you were saying on opportunity and right now, so, so what are you thinking of recruiting? Yeah, we have a lot of teams out there. They don't know. It's a big risk right now to recruit. Are people looking at all to, to become realtors in this, in this stage? Are you, so for teams, here's, here's the thing about teams, right? Teams, if they're smart, are going to find that it's easier to recruit today than ever before. People want to be a part of something. Um, there's, a, there's a human need right now to want to come together. Like there was, there was one person that said, do you think that um, all these businesses are going to lean towards being um, more remote after COVID? And for the same number of people that said, yep, I can do my job remote. I love it. There's just as many or more that go, I hate it. I don't like working at home. I don't like being at home. Like I want to go into an office. I want to be around other people. Like those are your people. The other thing too, so for my teams that are out there, like Sync works with the most elite teams on planet earth. What you need to know is that the stuff that you offer has a higher value today than it did three months ago. Yeah. If you offer XYZ tool and it was worth this three months ago in value, it's now worth this because the dollar is worth that. A dollar three months ago might be worth $2 or $3 today. And so you got to remember that your play and what you bring to the table just got better. And a whole bunch of people are selling less homes. Like that's also true. And the, the, there's always been that distance of the doers and the not doers. And I predict that that's going to get even wider through this and wider for a period of time after this. Like it does every single time a shift happens. There's someone who's going to build their business in this downturn. There's someone who's going to build their business in this weird time and i don't know i don't know what it means but i know every eight to 12 years something drastic happens and the economy has a complete reaction to it and it's never the same thing people go well this time isn't the same as last time well listen scooter one time those down that downturns created by interest rates one time it's created by bad lending one time it's created by oil price in alaska going to eight bucks a barrel one time it's created by war one time it's socioeconomics i mean it's never the same all we know is about every eight to 12 years, something major happens. This one might be the thing. This might be the thing that the major thing is something that's um, health wise. And there's no one to point the finger at. There's no, there's no one to blame. It just is what it is. Yeah. Just roll with it. So, so let's, uh, let's open it up for questions. Jamie, I know that you've been, uh, you've been supervising that. Do we have any, any questions that popped up? Absolutely. So the first question uh, that we have is regarding video equipment. Cody, if someone was looking to spend some money right now on video equipment, I don't know if they'd want to do everything that you have in your background, but are, what are a couple pieces of equipment or technology that you would recommend? If you're cool with it, Jamie, I can send you um, a complete um, Amazon shopping list with all the links of awesome. every single thing that I have in this studio and some pictures. And then people can pick and choose like, okay, I can afford this or this. To recreate the technology in my studio, I think, Lacey, is it 1200 bucks? 13? It's like 12 or 1300. And that's, that's um, soup to nuts. Like, that's everything. That's, 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 all the, that's, that's all the tripods. That's all the lights. That's everything. And the thing is, I've spent probably 12000 to figure out which stuff not to buy. I have a whole graveyard of stuff over here in the corner that I bought. That <laughs> like, we can imagine that, right? But for 1200 bucks, you can do the entire thing. If you don't want to spend that for two or $300, you can do really good LED lights and you could use your phone. 
So a good tripod that's not going to move around. I mean, spend the money on the tripod. The cheap tripods are cheap for a reason. The expensive ones are expensive for a reason. You know, the dog walks by behind it on the floor and the thing does this. Get the good one. Spend the money on the tripod, spend the money on the lights, and spend the money on the AV. For about 300 you could do that. Awesome. Uh, and I, we'll let all of our attendees know we will send out that list once we receive cool. it from you, along with some other best practices. Uh, you've been sharing tons of great uh, weekly webinars. I know you have one coming up later this afternoon. So uh, the, the other question, there's two other questions I have. The first being, when do you and how often should you be doing market updates today? We're doing them every day. Like my best partners are doing the 24-hour um, update. And I don't think anybody would have watched that three months ago. No one gave a damn. They're like, hey, that's overkill. That's too much. But right now it's interesting. Like they're actually getting clicks. They're actually getting likes. They're getting people saying, wow, that's really interesting. I had no idea. Like every, like if you, if you went to a party right now, can't go. But if you went to a party right now, everybody would ask you, how the hell is real estate? Everybody would ask. And so you might as well do it. And this is one of those things, like I think, I think that the wrong play today is waving your flag saying, pick me, pick me. I'm still a realtor. I'm still working. I'm essential. We're still our gas stations. Keep that in mind. But I don't think the right play is pick me. I don't think the right play is like all the funny stuff. Like I love the meme that says, can you see yourself being quarantined here? Like I like all those. I just think that our industry can do so much better than that. And I think what everybody should be doing is telling a story of something that worked for somebody. Somebody, if you're going to market, I think you ought to say the Johnson family just closed on this house. It's a COVID closing. They did. They got a great price on it. Everything was awesome. I'm so excited for them. You know, the the Wallace family just sold during COVID. Great job. My friends over here didn't buy or sell, but I helped them refi, and they saved two hundred dollars a month. Like that's all money. Those are the things that you do right now just one multiple offer, had multiple offer. You tell those stories, that's so much better than waving a banner saying, pick me, I'm a realtor. That's just cheap and you're better than that. You're just better than that, so quit it. I love it, R raise the bar, that's so important. Uh, the one last question, then we'll move to closing remarks with the two of you, is right now you've shared tons of great information. Uh, if you would have to pick one or the two things, very tactical, someone could add in, take away to their business today, what would be one or two of those items? And then uh, Alvaro and Cody, if you want to have some closing remarks before we uh, finish today. Something tactical I would do right now is I would go and I would do a Facebook A to Z. Facebook A to Z is very simple. There's 26 letters in the alphabet. There's 30 days in the month. And what you would do is today you would sit down and send a direct message to everybody whose name starts with A. Tomorrow it's B, the next day it's C. For the men listening, the next day is D, the next day is E. Like, you're going to make it through this. You're going to be okay. But it's just a simple, direct message. What we've learned, we started doing this four years ago. And I actually picked up the idea from a friend of mine, Ryan, in Canada. And I just thought this was like a, a, a slick two-month, like, you know how you look for sales things just to kind of keep people's attention? We did it for that. But we're four years later still doing it. And it's working better today during COVID than it ever has. But there's some rules. Rule number one, can't be real estate related. Even better for COVID right now. Rule number two, it needs to be specific. And rule number three, it's gotta be short. So it's two or three sentences. And so right now, like, I don't know, Alvaro, you might know, but I read a, you know, uh, a quick article yesterday that said that Facebook usage was up almost 250%. Like it's through the roof, which makes sense, right? Which means it's the easiest time to find I mean, you would just make a comment to somebody, a direct comment, a DM that says, hey, it looks like you guys still had an amazing Easter. Awesome. Or what'd you guys do for Easter? Or is your school district out for the year? How are you guys doing? Like those things, copy and paste, it takes a little bit of time, but we track all of our sales. And it might, I mean, it, it might shock some people that this is usually in the top five. It's always in the top 10 for sales um, sources for us. And we'll sell 15, 1600 homes this year. And, you're and so like, it's those, always a killer for us. Cody, you're sending those one by one. Those are individual messages. One by one. If you're smart, you'll copy paste it and you'll just change it a little bit. So like, I like things like, like right now it's, it's April. And so I would do one that's about spring. Like, Hey, what do you have springish? Um, if it's, you know, if it's fall, we'll do something around Thanksgiving. So I'll do something that you can kind of use over and over and over. And the better, you know, someone you're going to be able to say, Hey, what do you think about this or this? But nine out of 10 of them are just going to be copy paste. But short, I think to, to automate that. Harry, 
if you're looking, we need to think how to automate the A to Z Facebook thing. <laughs> it's so great. Like it, it just, it just has a lot of play. And then the people in my world that do it the very best, it takes time, but do it the very best. They go and like something on the person's wall, then send them a direct message. It just takes a little bit more time, but this is, this is where you find out that this really is a relationship business. Now this is really hard to do. So a shameless plug, if you don't have something like sync that's constantly churning leads, you can't do these things because when you sit down to do that, you got to think, Oh wait, no, I gotta go do this. That's the best thing about something like sync. Like you go to a listing appointment and while you're in there, something's happening. That's called leverage. While you're sitting there pounding out a Facebook A to Z, very one-to-one, -one, you've got leverage over here. If you don't have it, you're probably screwed somewhere. Like that's the truth. That's great. Alvaro, do you have any other closing remarks? Not really. I, I, just to say thank you, man. I think um, as I, today there's a lot of people with a real need and, and I respect a lot all of you guys that are still fighting and still out there and putting yourselves out there in different ways, virtually, physically, uh, to, to, to cover that need. And in your particular and for all of you team leaders out there, I know that you carry the weight of a lot of people that depend on you that are very, very scared right now. And, and so I think it's important for us to hear from each other and, and see what we're doing. So I really appreciate you jumping on here and, and giving us your thoughts and telling us about your business. So just that, man. Thank you. Uh, and I hope we'll do this more and more as time goes by. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So for all the team leaders out there running teams, remember that in times of crisis, the team leader is always found on the ground. In times of crisis, the general is always right there. You go to the front of the room and you cast a vision. You go to the back of the room and you pick up a job. And you go to work. That's what we're all doing right now. That's what we do. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Cody and Alvaro, thank you for spending uh, your afternoons with us. All the attendees, we love uh, to share this information as I shared at the beginning. We will be sending this recording via email. Um, and then any additional follow-up, check us out on our YouTube channel uh, just by searching Seek. Have a great day and we look forward to helping you soon. Talk to you all later. Thank you.